Okay, so now that we have our vent, uh, you'll notice that it's just a vent, it's just an um, inert surface. Um, so now we need to explore a couple of things. One thing is the actual uh, reaction that's occurring. Um, so right now in the model, uh, there's a polyurethane reaction um, that's that's built into the model, built into uh, PowerSim as a as a kind of default um, fire that they have put in here, um, and and you can see that they sourced it from the SFB handbook. So I just happen to have the SFB handbook right here, and so we can actually just um, see that uh, in chapter four, or chapter section three, chapter four, they have a um, a nice big table of of yields of fire products and and different things like that. So um, they have a bunch of different products and different materials that they have data for that's uh, good for inputting into the model. So I just wanted to point out that this is a good source for, for people and that they they source their information from this polyurethane right down here. Um, and you can just match that up with... Um, here you need to know kind of what the chemical uh, formula for it is, but I think they, they did this correctly. And then... Um, the other thing that you should really pay attention to is uh, fire suppression. That's that's it's more of an advanced topic. You can explore that on your own. I think I don't think we'll touch upon that in this class. He really straight is having to do with um, <coughs> the fire dynamics of the of the of the problem, and um, you can explore that on your own. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna touch that in this class. Um, but the thing you might want to pay attention to is the byproducts. This is going to have a, a large effect on um, how you can determine whether your uh, fire protection measures were successful or not. So, um, and that's what this table kind of shows is uh, the, the specific release per unit mass oxygen. So this is a pretty standard number that's um, um, very popular throughout the fire protection industry. And if you want more information on that, you can. Um, look up a little bit about um, oxygen calorimetry and and how that's uh, actually uh, scientifically completed. Um, okay, so these other two numbers, the CO yield and the soot yield. Um, so I don't know if you remember from homework one, we had to find the tenability criteria. Um, one of them might have been CO yield. One of them might have been fractional effective dose. One of those. One of those. Uh, those are both popular um, uh, tenability criteria. And so, when you input this number, this is going to have a pretty big effect on um, where what uh, the amount of CO that's going to be released from the fire, and and therefore. Um, what your uh, your FED is going to be throughout the space. Similarly, with the soot yield, you um, you may have mentioned visibility as one of your performance criteria. Or, um, and so, with the the soot yield you put in here is going to have an effect on what uh, uh, what your visibility is going to be measured at or modeled as throughout the model. So you want to make sure that um, you really really want to make sure that your um, just really sourcing your reaction and making sure that you have data here that you can back up and that um, you can defend. Um, and so here we see that this is a polyurethane reaction. Um, we sourced it from the SFP handbook. It's usually it's one considered one of the uh, standard textbooks for uh, the industry and so uh, it's clearly um, a good reference for us and I think for a lot of people in the industry. And you can see that here. Um, there's there's a bunch of different materials as well um, that you can choose from. Um, for today, I, I think I'm just going to stick with the polyurethane reaction, but uh, you have the ability to uh, create a new reaction. You can choose any of these you want. Input the the correct data in the correct fields, and um, uh, the model will uh, will will use that and and produce results um, from from whatever you input. Um, 
for today I'm just going to use use that polyurethane reaction.